Hi, I'm Jackie Partridge from Jackie Partridge Art. We will be painting some landscape paintings from the region of Waterloo. I would like to acknowledge the financial support of the Region of Waterloo Arts Fund for helping to support this series of painting tutorials. Be sure to like these videos and to subscribe to my channel. You can hit the little bell beside the subscribe button to receive notifications for when new painting tutorials come out. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at Jackie Partridge Art, and if you paint one of my tutorials, you can use the hashtag Jackie Partridge Art Classes and tag me at Jackie Partridge Art. I'd love to see what you create. Enjoy the videos and be sure to subscribe. So today we're going to be painting this farm field painting, and the photo was taken in a farm field outside of Walsley, Ontario. So the paint that I'm using is cadmium yellow, cadmium red, titanium white, cobalt blue. This is called Brilliant Blue by Amsterdam, chromoxide green, and Mars black. So I'm painting on a larger canvas today. You can paint on a canvas board, watercolor paper, or a smaller canvas if you would like. We're going to start by painting the sky. I'm using a one inch flat brush. This is a number 10 by Princeton. So I'm just going to start with some straight cobalt blue at the top. And I'm just kind of painting the first two inches at the top of my canvas. And you can go ahead and paint the edges of the canvas as well so that the color matches and just carries over the side. And then we're just going to blend our brilliant blue with our cobalt. You can just kind of layer it over top. If you don't have um, brilliant blue, you can add a bit of white to your cobalt as well. It's okay if your colors look a little bit different than mine do, it's fine. I'm painting in kind of a long swooping brush stroke so that the sky is nice and flat and smooth. So there's no clouds in this picture or painting, but if you want to add clouds, you can. I'm going to link some of my cloud painting tutorials in the description of this video, so you can check those out if you want to add clouds. That's perfectly fine. Adding a bit of water to my paint just to make it a bit smoother. So now I'm just going to start to add a bit of white towards the bottom of the sky. And don't forget to paint the edges as well. So 
So I'm painting the sky about two thirds of my canvas and then leaving about a third that's going to be for the farm field. I'm just kind of smoothing out the blending. Okay, so now that the sky is done for now, we can go ahead and start the base for the field. I'm just using the same brush to start up a foundation here. So I'm going to use my chromoxide green. If you don't have green paint, you can mix it with just a bit of your cadmium yellow and your cobalt blue. I will also link the mixing green video in the description that you can check out as well. So this is just a base coat. You don't need to worry about it looking perfect. We're just going to paint the whole thing green. I'm kind of swooping my brush kind of standing it up vertically and just letting it drag the bristles. And you don't need to worry about making a straight horizon line either. It can have kind of hills like this painting, that's fine. Sometimes if a line is too straight, it looks too perfect and we're not here to really copy the painting perfectly we can add our own creativity to the photograph. And you can paint the edges of your canvas as well. Okay, so we're just going to let this dry for about 20 or 30 minutes and then we can go ahead and finish off the grass and do another layer of the sky. So we'll go ahead and let our paint dry. Alright, so our paint has dried. We're going to do a second coat of the sky because if you look closely, you can see some of the white canvas showing through and we want to just cover that up since we don't have clouds in our sky. So start again with your cobalt blue and paint a couple inches at the top of the canvas. Do nice long sweeping brush strokes. You can do a bit on the edges if you notice anything. some of our brilliant blue or you can just use some cobalt mixed with titanium white and 
and I'm just adding it kind of right over top and again blending it in nice long smooth brush strokes Then we're gonna get some white in there, mix it up. Layer it over top so that it gets nice and blended. And you don't need to match the colors exactly. It's nice to have a little bit of variety in your painting. You can add a little bit of water just to help your blending be nice and smooth. I'm just adding some extra white to make it nice and light down at the bottom here. And you can add a bit more of your lighter blue at the top if you find it it's a bit too dark. You naturally want it to be darker at the top and going lighter to the bottom. So if you would like to add clouds at this point, you can use this time to add some clouds on top of your sky. And again, I'll link some of my cloud painting tutorials in the description of this video. But I like the sky the way it is. In the photograph, there's no cloud, so I'm just gonna leave it as is. So now I'm gonna choose my round brush, so number six. And I'm just going to use some of my cadmium yellow and add it into sections of our field. And I'm just going to paint it very loosely. And I'm, you can hold it kind of at the end of the handle so that you have some nice kind of loose lines. And I'm going to take some of my black with some of my green. You can mix a little bit of yellow as well. And this is just going to kind of be the edge of the corn or the field. Just kind of go straight across and then you can carry the line over the edge of the canvas as well. This 
So with this kind of color, a bit of yellow, and then I'm going to mix a little bit of blue because it's in the background. So with this color, I'm going to paint some of the trees that are in the background. So I'm just going to kind of dab it. And again, it's abstract. It doesn't need to look perfect. But some of the trees are a bit bigger. Some are smaller. And they're not going to be kind of evenly spaced. So I'm just going to kind of dab it to create this texture. And you can carry some of that over the edge of the canvas as well. Like that. And then you can use just the tip of it to kind of paint these hills. With our very small detail brush, you can use some of the yellow and you can just mix it with some of that brown that you mixed and just add some more different colors in with your trees to make them look a little bit more interesting. So you can just kind of dab it in certain sections that and then I'm just going to take some more of this green and you can paint sections just some little lines for the field Just doing short little lines. And then you can bring some of that green down here in the foreground. There's lots of long kind of grass. You can just use your brush and kind of go in different directions and just go very quickly and you can paint that bottom edge as well bring some of those darker greens down on the bottom edge and along the side I'm just adding some water to kind of make my bristles thin and the lines thinner and more loose. So then with that same color, I can add a little bit of extra yellow to it and do the same kind of thing, just put it in sections. And you can carry that on the edge as well. And sides.
some more yellow because it's like a wheat field. And I've just got water on my brush. Okay, so now I'm going to mix a bit of red with that yellow color to have some oranges in my field. You can add a little bit of green to just kind of dull it down. So it's just good to have lots of variety of color. You don't just want it to all look green. You want to have some parts that are a bit brighter and darker. And again, I'm going to link my mixing greens video that you can check out in the description of this video, which is going to be really helpful to you. I'm just going very quick, kind of dabbing and keeping my brush strokes nice and short and just kind of spreading out the color. And you can carry that color to the edge of your canvas as well. Having different shades and tones of a color just help create interest and helps the eye kind of move around your canvas. And grass is all different lengths and it sticks out in different directions, so don't worry about making all straight, perfect, even lines. We're working quickly to keep our brush strokes nice and loose. And you can carry some of that color in the background just a little bit. You don't want to put too much because it is a bit of a brighter color. Add a bit more yellow here. You can kind of dab it with the tip of your brush. Make like little flowers and things. Okay. And then lastly, I'm just going to take some of my white with some of that color that I mixed to just get some lighter bits in here. And I'm just gonna add kind of small little dots randomly, or like flowers or the wheat. So again, you don't need to space it out evenly. You can just kind of do it randomly. And then you can paint some kind of stems as well, make it look like the wheat. You can carry some of those strokes on the edge as well. And again, it doesn't need to be perfect. And 
And now I'm just gonna kind of dab it for the tops of the wheat. kind of dab it nice and close together so that we can cover up most of the green but still have some of the green kind of showing through. Add a bit more white if you need to. Again, just little kind of dabs. And they can kind of be more spaced out towards the background. And you can add some more yellow. closer to the front. In the foreground we're going to have our brighter colors. our brush and you're going to mix some of your green with your titanium white for the background of our hills Sun hits it at the top. You can just blend it with some more green. Okay, I am happy with that. Now we just have the hydro pole. So we're just gonna mix some gray with our black and titanium white. I'm just going to add a little bit of yellow to just kind of warm it up a bit. Okay. So you can use a piece of chalk to kind of draw it out. Again, we want to avoid things like painter's tape because that can make our lines look unnatural and like they're too straight. helps to kind of have my 
hand kind of resting on the canvas so that I can draw in a straight line. Okay, so that's our hydro pole. Can fill that in with the base coat. doesn't need to be straight or perfect because they're crooked and they have little knots in the wood so don't worry about it looking funny you can always paint over it if you're not happy with it <laughs> so I'm making sure that I have enough paint on my brush So once you're happy with that, then we can add the wires. So clean off your brush, get your Mars black. So same thing, the wires aren't actually straight. You can get a little bit of water on your brush. drag your hand across and carry it along the edge as well and then do that with the top wire as well so I'm making sure that I don't have a ton of water on my brush Mm-hmm. 
do the edge. And again, don't worry about it being perfectly straight because it's not straight in the picture. And on the other side, try to line it up so that it's even. certain parts. So. Then we've got a bunch of different wires and things coming down the side. Kind of a box on the side. So then with your wood, you can add the different knots that are in the wood. texture with just thin little brush strokes. I've got some water on my brush. we're going to add the shadow. So get a little bit more black mixed with gray. And we're just going to kind of paint the edge here. already just adding the shadow is going to make it look more re realistic and more three-dimensional.
There we go. So now we're just going to add a little bit more grass to make it kind of look overgrown around the hydropole. And I'm just going to add some more trees here. grass at the bottom, then we're done. Mix some green with your yellow. All right, so there you go, your farm field painting with a hydro pole. If you like this video, be sure to like it and subscribe to my channel to see new videos that come out. I will link the other videos in this series supported by the Region of Waterloo Arts Fund in the description of this video, and they can also be found in a playlist. Thanks so much, and if you make this painting, be sure to use the hashtag Jackie Partridge Art Classes and tag me on Instagram at Jackie Partridge Art. Bye!